this is our second part on our video on rotation matrices so on the top i have written the three rotation matrices about x axis y axis and z axis or we call them as the x root x rotation matrix y rotation matrix and z rotation matrix now the question is what happens when we have successive rotations so we have in the previous video we have discussed what happens when we have a point which rotates about one of the axes right when the point rotates either about x y or z now let's say if a point first rotates about one axis then rotates about another axis or it can rotate for about as many axes as it wants to so let's say if a point first rotates about the z axis by theta then it rotates about the y axis by negative phi and then it rotates by x axis by an angle new then how do we write the rotation matrix and what does this actually represent so understanding what this represents is very critical for before we proceed so let me try and explain to you what this actually means so the way that you read these successive rotations is that the first the point is rotated around the z axis first you read it from left to right then there is a rotation about the new y axis followed by a rotation about the new x axis sorry this should be x axis uh so yeah so this should be x axis um so just cross this out and this should be x axis so it should be z axis followed by y axis followed by x axis so initially the z axis is going to be aligned with the fixed frame then the y axis is the new y axis after it has been rotated by the z z rotation and then the x axis is the new x axis after it has gone through both of these transformations so let me uh try to explain this in a more graphical manner just remember that this is a mistake and it should be x axis so it should be x axis okay so let's say i have this as my fixed frame and now i need to rotate it about the z axis by theta so i have marked this rotation about theta uh, now what i will try to do is i will in order to make you visualize this better i will try to draw, draw a sphere and assume that all the rotations are taking place on the surface of the sphere so bear with me on that so i have drawn a sphere hopefully you can visualize it and i have redrawn this axis on the surface of the sphere which is this so this yellow axis is the same as this i have drawn it at a certain displacement but there is no displacement it is just to make it easier to visualize so let's assume that this axis is the same as this and now let's say if it has to undergo a rotation by theta so if this undergoes a rotation by theta what would happen is that this axis comes all the way here and now you see that the direction of the x axis and the y axis have changed so we have undergone a first rotation which is about the z axis by theta now we need to undergo a rotation by the y axis by negative phi now remember that this is the new y axis so this is not this but it is this y axis the new y axis now since we are going by the right hand rule so a negative phi would mean a rotation by phi in the clockwise direction so it would mean that we come all the way up which is this one so we rotate it by phi and we come all the way up so again remember that all of these rotations are occurring about this origin only and the reason i have made it spread out on the surface of a sphere is to make it easier to visualize so the first axis the first sorry the first rotation is about the z axis which takes it to this point then there is a rotation about the new y axis by negative phi sorry this should be phi 
by a negative phi which is so it means the phi in the clockwise direction which takes it up and then there is a rotation about the new x-axis about the angle new so it would be about this x-axis which is represented here so and now the blue one that you see is the final orientation after I have gone through all these three successive rotations Now the thing is, once you multiply all these three rotation matrices, the interesting thing is that what you get is another rotation matrix. And that is always the case. When you multiply a bunch of different rotation matrices, you always end up with a new rotation matrix. Well, how do, how do I know that this is a rotation matrix? If you remember from the last video, we talked about two properties that must be satisfied for a matrix to be called a rotation matrix. The first one was the determinant has to be equal to 1. So finding out the determinant of this is going to be the determinant of all these three individual rotation matrices. And we know that all the three individually have a determinant of 1. So 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 would give us 1. So the first condition is satisfied. Now for the second condition, A times A transpose must give me, me an identity matrix. So finding out the A transpose of our rotation matrix here so a transpose comes out to be x transpose y transpose z transpose and multiplying the two together i am left with an identity matrix hence i know that my new once i have multiplied these three successive rotations i do indeed get a new rotation matrix and this new rotation matrix is, is going to be a matrix which is three cross three so three rows and three columns Now, this right here, which is a rotation about Z, a rotation about Y, a rotation about X, is commonly known is in the literature as the forward kinematics of a Z, Y, X robotic wrist. So why do we call it a Z, Y, X robotic wrist? Well, first you can see that the way that we read it is from left to right. So first a rotation about Z, then a rotation about Y, and then a rotation about X, right? So hence the name Z, Y, X robotic wrist. Since it is in that order. And in order to um, talk about it in the terms of robotics, so let's say if I have a robot drawn here, so, and it has three revolute joints, so it can revolve about this axis, it can revolve about this axis, and it can revolve about this axis. Right. So what I have done is I have defined my fixed frame in this direction. So the first rotation that is going to occur is ab about the z-axis, which is theta. The second is about the y-axis, which is phi. And the third is about the x-axis, which is new. So you see, based on these three rotations, I can control the location of the end effector. And hence, this is known as the forward kinematics of a z-y-x robotic wrist. I hope this is more than enough for one video and if you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and in the future videos we are going to discuss even more interesting concepts about robotics and we are going to perform these analysis on real robots. So don't forget to subscribe and as always see you in the next video. Thank you.